Are you unsatisfied with the warming artifacts and noise that Lightroom has been adding to your Fuji RAW files? Or maybe you're a longtime Lightroom user that's contemplating switch over to Capture One because of your recent switch to shooting with Fujifilm. Well, before you fully ditch Lightroom, watch this video. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. In this video, I'm going to show you guys four different methods for sharpening your Fuji RAW files in Lightroom. If you do any type of research on the internet or talk to other Fujifilm camera owners, the question of what's the best editing software for Fuji RAW files will almost always come up. Specifically, the long debate over Lightroom versus Capture One. In short, using the default settings, Lightroom will yield bad results due to two things. One, poor demosaicing of the X-Trans sensor files, and two, over sharpening of the Fuji RAW files because Lightroom's default sharpening algorithm is tailored to traditional Bayer sensor cameras that have an anti-aliasing filter. These factors will result in excess noise, artifacts, a weird painterly effect, and worms. And photographers who can't figure out a solution through Lightroom are jumping ship to Capture One and some are just skipping Lightroom altogether. But the truth is, if you spend some time and do diligent experimentation, you can get some pretty good results with Lightroom. If you're curious to see the specific settings that are problematic, why they happen with Fuji files specifically, and the experimentation and thought process that went into coming up with my personal sharpening method, be sure to check out my other Lightroom sharpening video. But I've talked enough, and I'm not gonna go into the reasoning this time. Instead, I'm gonna give you guys a practical tutorial on four sharpening methods and break down the steps for how to execute these methods and ultimately to get better results with your Fuji RAW files in Lightroom. So before we get started, I'm going to just go off and tell you guys what version of Lightroom I'm using. I'm using the 9.0 release. So that way you can follow along. If you have a newer version, um, then there might be some things that have changed. So the artifacts and the worms and this painterly effect for Fuji photos um, when it comes to Lightroom editing and sharpening mostly happens with very detailed photos. So thinking landscapes, cityscapes, um, travel photos, that kind of thing. So for portraits or anything that doesn't have too many fine details, it's actually not that noticeable. But because I don't typically take landscape photos, I'm going to use the next best thing, which is this travel photo from Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, which we can see is the Millennium Falcon with this cool like desert rock type formation in the background. So this photo in particular was taken with my Fujifilm X-T3 with the 16mm 1.4 lens. Um, I did stop it down a little bit at f3.2. It was taken in bright daylight at 1 4,000th of a second at the base ISO of 160. So it should be a fairly clean file as far as noise goes. This is the raw photo right here and then after applying my RPB color preset and doing a little bit of cropping this is the initial edit. So now I'm going to introduce method one of sharpening and that's basically to tackle the default sharpening settings that are really incorrect in the beginning since they're tailored for cameras that have the Bayer sensor array as well as an anti-aliasing filter. That's mainly because of this detail slider is at 25. So we do zoom in a little bit. You can already start to see that kind of painterly effect in the rock texture. I don't normally zoom in this close but if we go to 2 to 1 can kind of see that wormy painterly effect happening and if I increase the detail slider you can really start to see these little worms pop out here. So we bring that back to the default. So what we should do is actually if you're going to be using or editing Fujifilm files quite a bit in your Lightroom, let's just go ahead and just adjust these default settings to never really import that way anymore. So what I'm going to do is drop the detail slider down to zero and I've also noticed that increasing the masking to about 50 or so is a good default setting to have that at. So this is going to be a little bit not as sharp as the initial import, but what you won't have is the worms anymore. In order to kind of fix this for future reference, um, basically I'm going to hold down the alt button or option on a Mac and click this right here, set default, and then update to current settings. But the caveat is if I do this, it is going to take into account all these editing settings. So let's reset this real quick, so cancel. And we're going to reset the file and then we're going to actually just change the sharpening settings only. So here, detail slider 25, increase the masking to 50, and then we're going to press Alt or Option on a Mac, set default, and just say update to current settings. So now if I apply my edit here, I'm going to double click right here, it's going to show that the 
default settings go straight to where we need to be. And right off the bat, this is going to give us a nice better starting point as far as sharpening settings go for all our Fujifilm files. So now I'm going to make a virtual copy of this photo so that we can start working on method two, which is to actually get in and start adjusting the sharpening sliders a little bit more with purpose. So here I'm going to just start by increasing increasing the sharpening amount. Um, I usually go around to like 90 or 100 or so. And then what I'm going to do is reduce the radius. Um, for very detailed photos, I'm going to bring the radius down to all the way down to 0 0.5. For portraits or anything with not too many fine details that you want to highlight, um, you can be at 1.0 to 0 0.9 for the radius. So now that I've got those dialed in, um, I'm going to tackle the masking, which are pretty much just going to target the transition between the actual subjects that are in focus and the out of focus area. So I'm going to hold down the alt button and click down the slider and it just drag this until the sky on the left side is no longer really being sharp. Here that's really kind of like at 80 or so. Okay, so now we're going to compare the two files and you can already see that there's a big difference between the photo that has no amount and masking versus the other one. So moving on, we're going to use some of the new features that Lightroom added in 2019, which is pretty much the enhanced details feature. So in order to do so, we're going to right click this thumbnail right here and go to enhance details. You're going to press enhance. Then you're going to have to wait a little bit while this renders up. Okay, so now that's rendered, we're going to go into this Enhanced Details file. Just to mask it down just a little bit. Cool. Now we can compare the Enhanced versus the previous method 2. You can see that there's just a little bit more detail and texture versus this right here. We can look at the little piping and all the mechanical stuff going on here in the Millennium Falcon. There's just a tad more details. So it is improving things. And that was method three is the enhanced details feature. So the last method that I want to test out is using a Radiant X transformer, which is basically a third party plugin that you do have to pay for, but it really does get you very, very good results. And the reason why I wanted to re-explore this method again was because of another YouTuber by the name of Thomas Heaton. He created a comparison video of the sharpening methods and it really prompted me to experiment. I think I just didn't give it a good enough serious look the first time around. So basically in order to do this, you want to go to file and then you go to plugin extras and then we're gonna choose the second one first, which is launch for setting changes. This is where you can dial in the settings that you want to have. This is the settings that I'm use for this particular photo which is more detailed. I'm going to have the sharpening set to medium. Um, this is beyond default. The eliminates noise reduction to low. Color noise reduction to low. And then this is default and everything else is pretty much default. So we're going to exit out and then we're going to go into file, plugin extras, and then process RAF to DNG. And here this is going to pull up the Iridium X transformer and convert this to the DNG And what this is doing is basically tackling the demosaicing portion of this. So method one, method two, we're only targeting the kind of anti-aliasing filter issue. The enhanced details for Lightroom tackles some of the demosaicing parts, but it's not as quite as good as Iridium X Transformers demosaicing algorithm. So one thing that is kind of annoying is that when you do process the RAF to a DNG is going to reset everything so you just got to sync it over so I'm going to come over here and sync all my settings and I did notice that it does have the little white balance shift issue so here I'm going to just adjust the white balance to match a little bit all right we're going to go into the sharpening it actually looks a little over sharpened at this point so I'm going to drop down this to around 50 or so and we're going to adjust the masking to I think we can adjust the masking to like right here and it already looks a lot more detailed and textured compared to even the enhanced details version and so now I'm going to compare these two 
So this is the Lightroom Enhanced Details, which we already seen was quite a big difference versus the Radiant X Transformer conversion. And here you can see it's a pretty radical difference between the two. There's a lot more texture. I mean, again, it might even be a little bit over sharpened again. So let's drop that down to 40 again and check that out there. So you can already see a lot more texture in this photo versus the other one um, for the enhanced details. And if we compare the Radiant photo to, let's say, Method 2, let's see if there's a big difference. So yeah, it's a drastic improvement um, between Method 2, which is the method that I used last year, all of 2019, for all my photos. It's, it's a crazy difference, so if you do want to invest the small investment to pay for a Radiant X Transformer and the plugin, just look at this difference between what details you can get in a landscape type photo. So while the enhanced details will get you a little bit more detail than without using it at all, um, the difference between enhance and Iridian X Transformer is is a big difference. So I really do think I would be reconsidering how I'm going to tackle sharpening for my professional work and personal work in this new year 2020. So for my own workflow, I plan to use a combination of method 2 and method 4. So like I've been doing already since 2018, I'll be using method 2 for portraits, photos in good lighting conditions, and simply photos that I or my clients won't be looking at the super fine details of. But moving forward, I'll be using method 4, the Iridian X Transformer conversion for personal work that involves landscapes, cityscapes, scenery, and travel work like I showed here. And for my wedding work, I'll be using it for venue shots, both indoors and outdoors, those epic environmental portraits. And I also want to do a little bit more experimentation to see how X Transformer does with low light and high ISO photos to see if it retains more details for these noisier images. But more to come on that. For those of you who want to compare the results of the four sharpening methods that I've shown in this video, I put together a zip file of the high res images for you to view at home on your bigger monitor, as well as a side by side comparison of each method. As a bonus, I'm also going to throw in my personal Lightroom sharpening preset so you can get results starting today. All you got to do is click the link down below, fill out the form, and you'll get an email with a link and instructions to download the zip file. If you're learning something new in this video, please give it a like and leave a comment or question down below. And also, please do share this with your other Fujifilm friends, especially those who are considering leaving Lightroom. As always, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'm making a new Fujifilm or photography video every week. And if that's too long for you, head over to Instagram and follow me at at Photo as I post new tutorials and tips throughout the week. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.